Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're not going to be talking about anything too crazy or revolutionary. We're just going to be talking about how to go through the if statements inside of C++. So if you're new to if statements and logic, this video is for you. So basically how things are going to be sp split up is we're going to talk about if statements. Then we're going to do a video over logical and comparison operators. So those will come in inside of our if expression. So when we have an if statement, we have an expression here. And I'm going to be talking about how to make complex expressions in the next video. And then if you're looking for switch switches, we'll talk about those after that. So this is just going to be talking a little bit about the if structure, and we're going to go through a very simple example. But before we do that, guys, I would encourage you to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, now let's get back to if statements. So let's create our if statement. It's going to look a little bit something like this. We're gonna say if, and then we'll put the curly braces. And inside of here, we're just going to use the same example we used in the previous video. We'll say something like if age is less than 13 in this example. So we'll create a variable age and we'll, let's give it the value 17. Now, if it's less than 13, what are we going to do? We're going to output and we're going to say you're not old enough. And we'll do a new line at the end like so. Now, because we're doing output, we need to make sure we include IO stream. I started fresh, so I didn't have that on here like so. Now when we do a compilation and when we run, nothing happens. And that's actually what we expected because this here evaluates to false. Because if you ask it as if it's a question, age less than 13? No, it's not. So it's false. If we did greater than 13, well then when we compiled and ran, we would get that output. So that is how an if statement works. Now anything after the if statement is going to run all the time. So we'll say always here. And there is an exception to that. I'll show you guys in a second. So we're going to get this always all the time. The exception to that is if you decide to do a return inside of this if statement, that's actually going to end the program. So for example, I could return negative one to say something went wrong, and then that will end the program. So now we get you're not old enough, and then anything after that is restricted only to those, which <laughs> this is funny because I kind of messed up the, the aging here. Let's, let's put this back to less than 13, and let's just say we're 11 years old. Now it makes a little bit more logical sense. <laughs> so when we run this, we get you're not old enough, it returns from the application, and we, we don't get to see what comes after that. So that's one way you could do it. You could just end the program or do a return. An alternative is to use the else. So else's are usually if you have a separate section of code you would like to execute in, in case it's evaluated as false. So that's gonna look like this, and this is going to say something like false. Now let's do a compilation and run. And you can see it says you're not old enough. That's because 11 is less than 13, but let's say our age is 111. Now it should say false. The reason it says false is because this evaluates to false and the else condition is ran. The last scenario is the else if, and the way this works is we can put another expression here. So let's say age is less than 13, we'll say age is less than 19. So let's say we're somewhere in between 15. In this case, we can do something else, so we'll output something different. Now let's do a compilation. And you can see we get that middle one. You're almost 19. That's because this one evaluated to false, so it goes down to the else if. This one evaluates to true, and then it just ignores the else. So only one of these is going to get executed. So you'll want to use the if, else, if, else structure if you're looking to branch in one way. This isn't going to be able to do all of these. So hopefully that was pretty clear. There's nothing too crazy about the if statement. If you're having struggles with it, just go through some practice. Try to make an application where it asks you a question, and then go through different cases. 
Now the beauty in this is it's used for making dynamic applications. Right now it's kind of useless because we know what the age is. But at some point we're going to want to get that from user input. So if we wanted to do that, it would look something like this. We would say standard C in, and we're going to store that value inside of age. Before we do that, we could output, how old are you? Like so. Now let's give it a run. It asks us how old we are, let's say we're 17, and it says you're almost 19. So that's cool. Now we made our application dynamic, and that's the magic. So thank you guys, in the next video we're going to talk a little bit about logical operators and comparison operators, basically how can we make these expressions a little bit more exciting. Alright, thank you guys, I'll see you in the next video, and if you've enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe.